we would like to remember the paedophiles did not take the lives of our friends. It was the cover-up that killed. Today, survivors of the Lambeth care system gathered. They say for decades the system couldn't care less as hundreds of children were abused, some younger than five years old. This was a system which allowed abusers to get to children and when they tried to speak up, calculatedly covered it up. Survivors say Shirley Oaks Children's Home was a paedophile's paradise. Allegations were made against 177 staff and others linked to the home. Shane Donnelly was abused by a man living there unofficially. There was no escape. It's weird how I, I, I blocked a lot out. Uh, I, I've walked with that shame and kind of kept it to myself and battled with kind of depression and all what it can tell us. You know, um, uh, I found it very difficult. Um, yeah. The truth is, too many children were left to rot because this was a council riven with racism, corruption and power struggles. There was infighting and in the 1980s a fight with the Conservative government. All took their toll on council services. The inquiry said children became pawns in a toxic power game that the council knowingly kept in its employment adults who posed a risk, allowing children in their care to suffer the most horrendous sexual abuse with just one senior council employee disciplined for their part in it. Well, they were so focused on their battles with central governments that they actually just left the people in their care without any focus by those very people that should have been looking after them. Do you conclude then that if there hadn't been those power battles going on within the council and between the council and government, that those children may not have been put at risk? I think it's inevitable to say that because all those things were going on, more abuse happened and abuse was allowed to go on for longer. Michael John Carroll hid a child sex abuse conviction to get a job in the Lambeth Children's Home. When it was discovered, the council kept him on. It was an absolutely horrific culture of failure and it was documented very accurately in the report that talked about extremism, corruption, neglect and criminality. But these survivors say the inquiry has stopped short of the full truth, an organised paedophile network in Lambeth. For me, the most outrageous thing is to say there was no paedophile ring. And it's almost as if this inquiry had certain little boxes it needed to tick off. The police were not complicit. There was not a paedophile ring. How dare you? Tonight, the Metropolitan Police apologised for missing chances to identify offenders. But the people in this room want a new inquiry into Lambeth, saying the truth still hasn't been told. The award-winning author Alex Wheatle was placed in Shirley Oak Children's Home when he was just three years old. He was sexually, physically and racially abused there. I talked to him earlier about life at Shirley Oaks and he told me about his distressing memories. My memory of Shirley Oaks is a brutal one and often traumatic one, something that um, I still suffer to this day. I have triggers all the time, um, at least perhaps once every two weeks or sometimes once a week when I look back and think how, um, how I was severely brutalised physically and sexually. I mean, so, you, um, as you say, you were, you were the victim of sexual abuse at Shirley Oaks and some horrific physical abuse too. Yes, I was, and it took me many, many years to get over that trauma. And indeed, sometimes when you're that young, you're not even realising or understanding that this is um, abnormal. You kind of normalise it in your head, thinking that this is your everyday existence and it's OK. But the sheer number of staff who faced allegations within Lambeth Council looking after children is extraordinary, isn't it? It is extraordinary, and you have to wonder how these people were allowed to operate, who um, helped them, who made them um, appear in those spaces with vulnerable children. I mean, in my household, we had one um, paedophile who worked there in the household, living there, sleeping in a bed for a number of years, and still it only took many, many years for him to face justice. How could this happen? People must have known. The leaders of Lambeth Council, the leaders of those children's homes, 
the superintendents, they must have all known about this. So there was um, a cover up over many, many years and decades. And the report, as we know, talks about horrific sexual abuse, talks about horrific physical abuse. You yourself were beaten. Um, but yeah. it also talks about racism. Well, one of my early memories, Jackie, I was a young child, maybe six or seven, and um, it was visiting day, and yet I had no one to visit me. And I turned to the housemistress in my household, and she told me that, um, oh, they've gone back to the jungle because they left you on the dock at Tilbury. So that was a kind of um, racism that I received at such a young age. And you kind of normalize it, you kind of believe it that this actually was the case. I believed that for a number of years. I mean, you've obviously become, since then, a hugely acclaimed writer. You got an MBE from the Queen. Do you ever put things like this behind you? Can you ever put it truly behind you? Um, the answer is, Jackie, to be honest, no, you cannot, because there's, all no, there's always a corner in the back of your head that might trigger a memory, might trigger something that happened to you that um, was traumatic. And so I think over the years, for me, I've learned to live with it. And in the last year, the, they have begun to pay out compensation to some of the survivors. I just wonder, though, can it ever repair the damage? No, I don't think it can because the damage is too deep that uh, money cannot repair. It, it really can't. And I really hope as a legacy of this, that the country takes breath and asks themselves, how can this be allowed to happen on their watch, if you like? We're meant to be a civil country. And so it's quite disgusting what had occurred. And hopefully we can all learn from this, not just the police, not just the social services, not just the authorities, but everybody needs to keep a look, keep a look out for what these kind of um, things can do to young people and indeed older people. Alex Wheatle, thank you so much for talking to us today. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Jackie.